So, appreciate you guys joining me today. My name is Isaiah Rojas. I'm the uh, area developer for uh, I9 Sports in Frisco, Plano, and Prosper. We are very excited to get back on the field for the fall season again. Uh, summer was our first time back after a long break, and that season went very well, and we're really, really excited for um, our, our fall program, which is typically one of our more popular seasons of the year. Everyone getting ready for football season. So what I wanted to do is show you guys a presentation uh, to kind of review what to expect this season, give you guys some resources. Uh, typically, opening day, we get you guys out on the field. We do a big meeting with everybody there, and we go over all, all the information that we need. But uh, nowadays, uh, we can't really do that as much. So we're going to be doing this uh, virtual meeting to get you guys updated and get you guys informed of what you need to know. That way, uh, on game day, you guys can just head straight to your field and, and be prepared and ready to go. So let's go ahead and jump into it. All right, so before we jump into some of the program notes, I want to make sure we touched on our leagues, values, and roles first. So as a league, our values provide a fun, safe, instructional, inclusive, and sportsmanship-based program. That is our focus as a league. Um, as adults, we all have a role to play to make sure that this happens. So as parents, we want you guys to, to be there to support all kids using, per, using encouraging, positive words and actions. So that means not only cheering on and being positive towards the kid that's on your team and your own child, but also making sure that you're not being rude or disrespectful or anything like that towards another kid or putting them down. You know, we're not saying something like, hey, good job, that guy can't defend you. You're way faster than him. That's a nice for your kid to see here, but not very nice for the other kid to hear. Uh, so we wanna make sure that we're not doing things like that. And those encouraging positive hey, words partner, and actions. We can't hear you, buddy. I have some people in the background that are uh, not muted. You guys can mute yourselves real quick. That'd be great. So, um, so as coaches, we all have a role to play to make that happen as well. It's in the front. Guys, if you can mute yourselves uh, in the background, please make sure you're, you're, you're muted. Thank you. Um, so as coaches, we want to make sure that we're out there to teach sportsmanship by being a fun, supportive, and positive role model. Uh, obviously, we want them to learn how to catch, throw, run, learn the offense, learn the defense, and have success. But above everything else, we want to make sure that coaches, we're teaching sportsmanship, the kids are having fun, they feel supported, and we're positive role models to them because that's what's going to continue them playing season after season after season. You might be the greatest coaches ever winning every single game, but if you're yelling and screaming at them the entire time, focus on everything that they're negative and overly aggressive, complaining about every single play, about every single call, then you're going to burn these guys out. And so we don't want that to happen. Um, so as staff, we want, we're going to be out there to promote fair play through a safe, organized, and fun environment. We're going to try to communicate with you guys as far as what to expect and what the season is going to look like. And um, we'll make sure that we execute that when we're out there on game day. So um, we were going to have a sponsor from Scottish Rite join us today, but he, he wasn't able to join us. But I just want to this season, you'll see their names on our, on our jerseys and you'll see their banners out there. Uh, so we do appreciate their support. They're going to be giving us some information to hand out to you guys, um, some resources on keeping the kids safe, keeping them healthy, keeping them hydrated, all those kind of uh, great things. So look for that as we get closer to the season. They also donated a bunch of hand sanitizers to us that we'll have out in the field if you want to take one, and little small individual ones. So we do appreciate their sponsorship and their support over the summer and fall seasons. All right, so looking into some notes for the season, we have um, a coaches meeting that's going to be happening on Thursday, the 17th at 7 p.m. This is going to be another virtual meeting. We're going to focus heavily on the rule book, um, you know, executing the playbook, um, kind of what to expect for practice and games and getting, getting, getting our coaches prepared on that side. So if coaches, if you're going to be, um, if you're a coach, if you're interested in coaching or helping out your coaches, please be present for that meeting. That way you're aware of what's going on and, and can, you know, coach the teams based on the way we, we uh, play our sport. Um, we do have three locations this season, Shawnee Trail, Frisco, um, at Reynolds Middle School in Prosper, and Old Shepherds Park in Plano. Um, as we know, the weather in Frisco and, and in North Texas can be a little bit unpredictable. So every single week, an hour to an hour and a half before the first game starts, we're going to be updating the weather hotline. It's this phone number right here, just a recorded message that we update every single week. So if you do not have this phone number on your phone yet, please get it in your phone 
It's also going to be on the schedule and on the email that we send out to you guys every single week. So um, look for those. But um, if we have to cancel a game, we update the weather hotline. We email all of our parents. We call our coaches. And then we update the website with when that makeup game is going to be done. So please make sure you're checking your emails. If it's like, you know, a little bit drizzly, you're not sure, call the hotline. If it says that, you know, hey, games are still not canceled, we're still on, cool. Check your email, make sure one more time, and then head out to the field. Um, but typically, we try to update that as quickly as possible. Um, first thing we do is update the hotline. Then we send the email while we're calling our coaches. And then we update the website afterwards. So if we do have any cancellations during the season, we'll make up our season finale on either November 8th or November 15th. So please mark those dates down on your calendar as potential potential season finale days for our season if we have any cancellations um, you know, leading up until that date. As far as equipment, required equipment for our kids is cleats or athletic shoes. Um, they do not have to wear cleats, but they want to have athletic shoes. They just have to have rubber spikes. No metal spikes are allowed. Um, when it comes to their shorts, any color shorts is fine. But we definitely try to get shorts without pockets, if possible, or pants without pockets. And um, the reason for that is kids going for the flags, usually the flags are right at their hips where the pockets are at. Um, we've had the situation where their fingers get caught, you know, pulling for a flag and either they can hurt themselves. And unfortunately, we had situations where a kid pulls down another kid's shorts or rips their shorts off. And it can be a little embarrassing for a 10 year old out there or, or a three year old or even, you know, an adult. So, but, so try to as much as possible, try to get shorts without pockets. Uh, I know those are harder to find these days, but if you can, uh, that's what we recommend. Uh, make sure that they have a water bottle. And the one piece of equipment that we'll, we'll be checking before every single game is a mouth guard. Kids cannot get on the field to play their game without a mouth guard. We do sell them on site for $3. Um, it is cash only because we don't have a credit card processor out there. Um, so if you forget one or whatever, we can sell you one there on site that you, the kids can use. Or if they want to go by Sports Authority or Dick or whatever, they can do that or Academy. Uh, they can pick one of those up. Um, they are more expensive typically in those kind of stores compared to the $3 that we sell them for. But um, that way you have one prepared beforehand. Um, you can do that if you need to. With that being said, if you if you show up game day and you're like, man, I forgot my mouth guard or he, um, you know, whatever, destroyed it, chewed on it too much and it's, it's gone um, and you forgot cash, go by the table. Let them know, hey, you know, unfortunately, I forgot my, you know, we need a mouth guard. I don't have any cash. We're not going to have a kid not play because of a mouth guard. If you're doing this every single week, we're going to be like, all right, you know, something's going on here. We're going to start running a tab. I'm charging you later on. But, um, you know, if, it, if you just forgot one that week and we're going to say, hey, no problem. Just, you know, try to remember to bring $3 cash next week and we'll, we'll make sure the kids get their mouth guards. But um, we're not going to have a kid sit on the sidelines and watch their team play just because of that. So make sure you let us know if that's the situation. Um, when it comes to equipment, we're going to provide the coaches an equipment bag before every single practice that they use for their practice and the games. In this equipment bag is going to be two balls for that age group. So uh, ages 10 and under, they use a peewee size ball. Ages 11 and plus, they use a junior size ball. Uh, so in that bag is going to be two balls. They're going to have six cones, uh, six cones for them to use for practice. And they're going to have 10 flags for them to use for the practice games. So this is something that the coaches are going to pick up at the check-in table when they arrive. And at the end of the game, they're going to get to collect all the equipment and they're going to bring it back to us before they leave. Coaches will not be taking these equipment home. So make sure the kids don't go home with the flags on their way still. We want to make sure we collect those back from you guys before they head on home. And again, this is equipment that we clean all the balls before and after every game. We wipe down all the flags before and after every game. That way they're nice and clean before each child. All right, so, but if you do want to bring your own, set of uh, your own football, that's perfectly fine. If you want to bring your own cones, perfectly fine. Um, but make sure that they have to use the I-9 sports flags. That's something that they will be using no matter what. Um, and then on game day, we're going to give you guys, on opening day, we'll give you guys a reversible jersey. So on your schedule, it's going to show that you guys have, you know, you're wearing a red jersey that week or a blue jersey. So this is what the blue jersey looks like, the blue and neon green. And then, if you know, every single jersey is reversible. So the opposite side is going to be red and black, just like this. So if you're wearing red that day, you are red. If you're wearing blue that day, you are blue. But that way, you want to make sure you show up with the correct color jersey. Uh, that way, you can identify your team and your and uh, there's no confusion out there. So um, that's how the jerseys will be handed out on game day, on opening day. In addition, the coaches will get a coach shirt. It's a red shirt that's going to say coach on the back. That way, we know that that 
uh, that coach has been background check certified and trained and can get that, you know, is a background check coach. So coaches, make sure you wear that every single week when you're out there. Yeah, or they're uh, under, your sh under your sweater or over your sweater if it's cold out there or whatever. We want to make sure we're seeing that. So those will be provided on opening day. If you ordered shorts or socks or a t-shirt or anything else through the i9 Sports website, those items get mailed directly to you. So just pay attention to that. Uh, those will get mailed directly to you on opening day or, or at your home. Only the jersey do we distribute on opening day. All right, so what to expect? Oh man, did not update that. On opening day on September 20th, not the 12th. So on opening day, since we had our meeting today, you guys are gonna head straight to your field. So when you guys arrive to the park, you wanna just walk by the check-in table. We're gonna ask you what team you're with and what sport you're with. At that point, we'll direct you to your field. Once you get, for most of you guys, it's gonna be field one is, is the football field. But if it's different for your location, you'll say, hey, you're here. I'm here for football. All right, go ahead and go to field one. Once you get to the field, there's gonna be a staff person there waiting for you. That's gonna ask what team you're with. And if you're with, uh, you know, FS, FO1 49ers, you'll be on here. You guys are meeting here. FO2 Cowboys, you're going to be meeting on this other end of the end zone or this other area. So we'll let you know where to go once you guys arrive and where to find your team. Um, once you get to your team, we're going to have the players stick with the team and with the coach. And parents, we want you guys to go ahead at that point, set up in the spectator area. So whether it's for practice or for the game, uh, you want to make sure that you kind of at that point leave them with the team and go ahead and go sit down to watch practice and kind of relax and socially distance yourself from the other parents on your team that are going to be watching practice as well. So what we don't want to have happen is, you know, we have the eight kids with the coaches and, you know, you know, another 18 parents standing behind them. Everyone's in a big crowd. Obviously, now we don't want to do stuff like that. So, you know, we're going to have you guys go straight to your field, straight to their practice area. At that point, you go ahead, drop your kids off with them and head over and sit down and uh, get ready to start watching practice. Once the kids are with the team, the coaches are going to do a quick introduction, introduce themselves, pass out the jerseys, do that stuff and kind of get them ready to go, you know, let them know what their team name is and all that kind of fun stuff. Um, and then make sure the jerseys are fitted correctly. If you get a jersey that you ordered a small and you need a, you know, an extra small, just look for one of our staff members or give it to the coach and we'll come by. Our staff will be coming by throughout the day and checking in with you guys. Hey guys, how's everything going? Do you guys have any exchanges? At that point, let's know, yeah, I got this small and this medium. I need an extra small and uh, um, a large. And we'll go to the check-in table. We'll get those sizes. We'll bring it back to you. That way we don't have a crowd at the tent, you know, with people waiting to get their exchanges. We can go back and forth and take care of that for you guys. So leave it up to our staff to do that, please. That way we can take care of that for you guys. Coaches, if you have extra jerseys at the end of the day where one or two kids just didn't show up that week, um, hold on to those jerseys. At the end of the day, when you pass back your your jersey, your equipment bag, just give us, you know, here's the equipment bag, and here are these two kids going to show up that week, and we'll hold on to those. And we'll tell those parents that, hey, if you didn't show up week one, stop by the check-in tent, and we'll have your jerseys for you. That way you don't have to worry about, um, you know, bringing that back and forth and forgetting it at home and that kind of stuff. We'll take care of that for you guys again. So once the kids' jerseys are on, the introductions are done, at that point, you guys will go ahead and start your first practice right there on the field. So if you're the first group of the day, you're four and five year old division or six and seven year old division, you guys are the first game of the day, you guys will practice right there on the game field. And I'll show you guys exactly where that's at in a little while for each location. But most of you guys are gonna show up when there's already a game going on. So if you're seven U, 10 U, 14 U divisions, junior, senior, whatever, Pee Wee, you guys will show up and they're most likely gonna be another team already playing on the game field. So we're gonna show you the designated practice areas where you guys will can meet with your team. And so what we tell our coaches is week one, designate where you want your team to meet and have your practice and have it there every single week. That way parents don't show up every single week like, okay, I had to find my team here at the field and I need to find a, figure out where they are. Um, they know every single week we're meeting in this area and that's where we'll have our practice. So we'll, I'll uh, show you some of those practice areas and things like that so you guys are aware of that. Then once the practice is done, we're about five, 10 minutes before your practice or your game's supposed to start, we'll have you guys come over to the game field so while that game is, is, is over and those parents are heading out the field, we'll get you guys on the field, do a safety check, check to make sure the kids are shirts tucked in, there's no jewelry, there's nothing, um, you know, watches, things like that on. We'll make sure they have their mouth guards on, mouth guards on, make sure they have the correct cleats, and then we'll do the coin flip and get the game started. So um, so that's how we'll, we'll, we'll run that. And then they'll, they'll play their first, um, you know, scored game 
right after there, right after the practice is done each uh, the starting this weekend. So a couple of reminders on the schedule, you'll notice that um, we're asking all the parents to show up about 15 minutes early on an opening day. So typically you might be starting your practice at 1130, but this week it's at 1115. And that's just because we want you guys to get there early to do this parent meeting, to get the jerseys distributed, make sure we get everyone situated before we start our practice. Um, but after that, you'll show up at the practice time, try to show up about five minutes early, that way you can get your cleats on, ready to go, and that way they can start their practice right on time. Um, we are asking that as much as possible, we try to limit spectators at the field. So uh, again, what we're asking for here is, you know, we're not gonna say, hey, you know, dad can come but not mom, or mom can come but not dad. Um, if you if you can do that, great, that, that's even better, that's recommended, but we wanna try to keep it to at least immediate family only. You know, what we just don't want to have is, you know, mom, dad, grandmas and grandpas and uncles and aunts and the whole family coming out to support their kid, which I'm sure they want to. But right now for safety measures and because of the requirements set up to, set up with us with the cities, we have to try to limit spectators as much as possible. That way we're able to socially distance while we're out there. So please help us out on that side. Um, and again, do not come to the, to the field if you or someone in the house is sick or showing any symptoms. And please follow the state executive order in regards to face masks, which we'll get into in a little while. All right, so, so I, want, I want to touch on some lean format notes here. Kids are placed on teams based on balancing out their age, height, weight, skill, and, re and special requests. We try to do this as much as possible. I have like six and seven different numbers that I look at to try to balance out every single team. And they're usually within one or two inches, two or three pounds of each team. Um, skill level wise, as far as their total scores, we're throwing one or two points. That doesn't always mean it's going to be a perfectly balanced team. Sometimes it works out great. Like this last summer season, we had uh, very balanced teams. And sometimes, you know, I'll get a, a couple of parents that'll list their kids as ones, but they're really their fours and fives um, within this program. So um, when those things happen, obviously it throws it off a little bit. But we try to do our best to try to balance out the teams when they're out there on the field. Um, you're going to have sports corners that are work with their volunteer parent coaches to provide support and encouragement as necessary. And obviously our staff will be officiating the games once the games start. Uh, we have four different age groups, not three. We have four different age groups this, this fall season. We have a Tykes, Pee Wee, Junior, and Senior. Each age group has, ad has adjusted uh, rule books, has adjusted game time and practice time. That way it's age appropriate as they move up through the different divisions. Uh, practices were focused on skills, speed, agility, and technique, and obviously learning their playbook. Teams are small-sided, and the game is broken up to two halves. So it's either a four-on-four four for our youngest divisions or five-on-five five for our older divisions when it comes to our games. And the games are going to be anywhere between two 16-minute halves to two 22-minute halves, again, depending on the age groups that we're, uh, we have out there on the field that day. Um, so an example of a typical day would look like is um, – when you guys arrive to the field, arrive at your scheduled time, you'll start your practice coaches, you'll check in at the tent, you'll get your equipment bag, you'll get your sportsmanship medal, and you'll head out to your practice field. The kids will practice for 30 to 45 minutes, and the football game will be 30 to 45 minutes as well. Uh, for the senior divisions, that might go about 50, 55 minutes, but um, we have about a couple minutes you know, of, with timeouts, and then we have a couple minute halftime break as well, so um, it's typically about 30 to 45 minutes for our games. <clears throat> so in regards to post game, we're not gonna be doing high five lines and parent tunnels and things like that. Uh, for safety reasons, we adjust the things and we are eliminating that part of the, of the, uh, the post game um, celebration. So what's gonna happen is on each field, we're gonna have one side of the field that's gonna be for uh, players and coaches and one side of the field is gonna be for spectators and parents. So when the game is done and the whistle is blown, we're going to bring all of our players and coaches to the sideline where, where our parents are at. We're going to line them up shoulder to shoulder. So one team on this side, one team on this side. And at that point, our refs just going to do a quick, all right, guys, let's give a round of applause for the 49ers over here. Round of applause for them. Round of applause over here for the Cowboys. Give a round of applause for them. Great job for both teams. Good job. And then that'll be our high five line. That'll be our showing sportsmanship for both teams at the, after the game is done. That's how we'll handle that. At that point, we want you guys, the parents, to stay where you are, the players and coaches to stay where they are. At that point, that's when the coaches are be rewarding the sportsmanship trait for that week. So each and every week, we emphasize a different sportsmanship trait. Uh, so it might be listening, positivity, 
being a good buddy, um, you know, motivator, dedication, perseverance, whatever trait it is that week, we emphasize a different trait each and every week. And so we'll ask the coaches to hand out the medal to the child or the children who best exemplified the, that trait that week. So it's not an MVP award. It's not I scored two touchdowns and threw two touchdowns. It's the, the player that showed the best sportsmanship for that trait. That way we're emphasizing not only their performance, but the character that they're displaying while they're out there as well. So while the kids are out there and they're clapping lines after that is done, the coaches want to have you guys stay there. The coaches will, you know, really quickly, um, you know, announce the two, uh, one or two winners for sportsmanship award that week. We'll give them a round of applause. And then at that point, the kids will go ahead and head on home with their mom and dad and find their parents and then head on home. We're not going to be doing any team snacks, any parent snacks, things like that. You don't have to worry about that stuff. So once the award is given, you guys can head on home. And again, just like you see our little guy here in the picture, um, if you want to stop by the check-in tent and pick up an award, sportsmanship award winner sign to take home with you and display in front of your yard and show off in front of all your friends and family and your neighbors, feel free to do that. Or if you just want to go by the signs on the field and take a picture with your kid in front of that sign, showing that they won the award that week, you can do that as well. And, uh, you know, uh, post it online or whatever you want to do. But those award signs are there for you guys to take them if you want to. All right, so um, I want to touch on a couple of things real quick. So when it comes to safety and sportsmanship, uh, obviously flag football is uh, tried to be a non-contact sport, but the contact is going to happen, whether they're going for flags, whether they're going for, you know, um, the, the same ball or whatever is going to happen. They're going to bump into each other, knock each other over uh, on occasion. So, you know, we would tell our coaches, if, if there's a doubt of a potential injury, we're going to sit them out, whether it's for a play or a half or a quarter, or a few minutes or whatever it might be. So if we see two kids, you know, hit themselves pretty hard and they might have had a little collision or one kid hit, hit the ground pretty hard and might have whiplash, we might sit them down for a while and just kind of wait it out. It was, there's no game, no play important enough that we're going to try to put a kid out there who might have injured himself. So we ask you guys to support us if that decision is made. Um, sportsmanship is expected by everyone. Football is one of those sports within our program where on occasion we get those coaches and the, those parents who – uh, forget that they're watching 10U football and not the Cowboys playing. And, you know, so we want to make sure that as spectators and coaches that we are showing sportsmanship, we're showing respect to our, our fellow parents, uh, we're showing respect and sportsmanship to our fellow coaches, the coaches that are volunteering to lead our teams, as well as the officials who are out there working um, to officiate the games. Uh, the officials are going to miss calls. It happens. And they're not going to do it on purpose. They don't like one team more than the other. They don't have any preference. They're trying to call the game as best as they can. And there's going to be times where they just miss it. And when it happens, hey, next play, we'll get it next time. And if, as a coach, what we tell our coaches, if you see something, pull them aside. Hey, ref, you know, uh, number 12 just keeps on holding my guy over here. Can you look for that? Hey, no problem. I'll look for that. Much better situation to handle it that way instead of yelling about, hey, are you blind? Number 12 is holding my – number 12 has been holding my receiver for the last 10 plays. And now you got the other coach – upset now you got number 12's parents over there talking about what this other kid is doing and you just escalate the situation bigger and bigger and bigger and we don't want that obviously we want the field experience to be positive to be fun so if you see something if you notice something if you have an issue with something come tell us staff come tell the ref respectfully and let us know and we'll handle that stuff for you and again any inappropriate language or behavior will not be tolerated we have rarely had to suspend a coach or suspend a player or, or parent that is something that has very, very rarely happened within the six years that we've been operating, five years that we've been operating. But um, we want to make sure that we kind of set that expectation. This is a fun first recreational league. We want the kids to be the focus. We want to go home talking about the kids and what they did and how they played and not this parent did this and this coach did that and my ref did this and this and that. We would want to let's talk about the kids. Let's keep the focus there. So one way we do this and what we tell our coaches and, and staff and parents is we want to emphasize on the effort of our kids and the attitude that they display and not the outcome of the game or the performance of that one child. Because there's going to be games when your kid puts up three touchdowns and they win by three touchdowns. And there's going to be games when your kid drops every touchdown pass and they had a really bad day and they lose by, you know, two points because of that. And they lost the game because of, you know, that, that, you know, that mistake. Uh, we don't want the kids feeling like their success or what happens on the field when it comes to their outcome or their performance shows that they are a failure or not. Because in reality, this is recreational youth sports. So if they have a great attitude the entire time, and if they're growing, showing great effort the entire time, and they do that consistently, 
that's going to continue for them to want to play. That's going to continue for them to show, have good results, where the performance and the outcomes are going to come. But that's where we can always make sure that the emphasis and the kids are always feeling like they, they, they have control over what they can do out there. They can't always control the outcome, the refs, the other team, but they can control their effort and they can control their attitude. And if we can do that and we can focus on that, the kids are always going to end up every single day successful if they can do that the right way. So instead of saying, hey, did you win today? It's, hey, did you have fun today? You know, did you learn anything new? Did you, you know, any cool plays happen? Those kind of things really kind of emphasize those aspects of the game instead of, oh, yeah, well, no, we lost. Oh, shoot, well, did you score any touchdowns? No. Okay, well, that stinks, <laughs> you know. Uh, we don't want to focus only on the, that part of the game. So um, as we kind of transition into some of the resources for you guys, make sure you come to the field prepared, informed, up to date with your team. Know your team name, your coach name, what field you're on, all that information. Every single season, we have parents come up to the check-in table on opening day and say, hey, I don't, I don't you know, oh, what field are you with? Oh, I'm not sure. What's your team name? Oh, I'm not sure. Who was your coach? I'm not sure. Like, okay, well, let me get your kid's name and let me find out where, where they are. So try to know that information when you arrive on that first day, that way you're prepared. And how you get that information is using the i9sports.com website. Every single one of you who registered your kids and it gets my emails, has an i9sports.com account. So both parents might not have it. So for example, let's say I got coach, uh, you know, I got Damari who has his kid in our program. Um, he registered his son and his son. So he's getting all the emails. Uh, Damari's wife might not be getting those emails because she's not the one that registered. So if you're not getting the emails from me uh, about the league, about the schedule, about all these things, Send me an email. Let me know. Hey, can I can I add my husband to the contact list? Can I add my wife to the contact list? Can I add uh, my uncle who's going to be dropping him off to the contact list? That way, everyone who needs to be informed of what's going on for your child's registration, your child's program, is up to date. So let us know if we can help out with that. But if you log onto the website, uh, go under uh, the top here. You can put your email address, the password that you created, click login, and you'll be able to see all the information that you need for your kid. And kind of show you an example of what that looks like. If you have multiple kids, you'll have a tab for each, and you'll see the date that they're playing, the arrival time, the game time, you know, uh, game info from previous weeks, directions to the park, where the practice area is, where the game field area is, who their opponent is, what color jersey they're wearing. We won't have snacks right now because snacks aren't something that we're doing, but you will have something that says attendance. So if you know that, hey, week six, I'm not going to be there, you can let coach know already, hey, week six, I'm going to be missing. So that way coach can prepare for that. But in addition to all this information, you can see at the very bottom program details, the weather hotline number. You can contact me, the director office. You can contact your coach. You can print, email your schedule. All that information is on the website with everything you need to know. Uh, coaches can update stats. You can see the standings from the season. Uh, coaches can look at um, playbooks, drill guides, practice plans, you know, tons and tons of information to make sure that you're prepared and ready to go for each and every week. In addition to that, every single Thursday afternoon, I'm going to send you an email with uh, a weekly newsletter. It's going to have, you know, coach of the week, sportsmanship traits of the week, any schedule or league changes. Say, for example, we had a, uh, a rain out. I'll let you know when that's going to make up, what's going on there. Or we're getting close to playoffs. Here's what the playoff bracket looks like and the schedule looks like. And for each of the divisions, um, any league information or promotional items, special events, field maps, all that stuff we put on there. Um, also, we get a lot of emails from parents with some pictures from the field. This is a parent emailed me this picture. This kid made this great one-handed catch. So she sends it over to me. We put it in the newsletter, share it with everybody else, and uh, give him some recognition for a great play. So if you take a great video or picture of your kid and want to share it with everybody, we love getting those and sending those out in the newsletter and putting them on our social media sites as well. Um, so that's another great resource. In addition to that, in your on the field, Please look for us as site, man uh, site managers and sports coordinators and referees. You can see us with a I-9 Sports Blue staff shirt. Look for us there if you have any questions, whether it's a complaint about the ref or a coach or a concern about safety or, you know, hey, coach is, you know, he keeps on forgetting to put his mask on. Can you please give him a reminder? Well, whatever it is, uh, let us know so we can handle the situation. We want to be the ones that handle those concerns that you may have and not you going to a parent and saying, you know, going to a coach and say, hey, how come you're not playing my kid enough? And that just creates conflict instead of just, you know, letting us handle it. Because nine times out of 10, when that complaint comes up and I'm like the coach, when I talk to him, he says, oh, shoot, I forgot. I, I didn't get him in the last rotation. All right, I'll get him in the next two rotations and get him some extra playing time for sure. And it's typically just a, an honest mistake. But 
Uh, we don't want to create conflict by, you know, getting people confrontational about it and getting defensive about it. So again, any situation, uh, negative and positive. We love to hear what our coaches are doing great, what our staff is doing great, that you guys are enjoying the program. Let us know about it. That way we can um, help you guys and support you guys there on the field. So I want to show you real quick what the field layout is going to look at at each location. I know it's not really a huge picture, but on uh, Thursday, I'm going to send you this uh, in a bigger format. That way you guys can look at it. But at Reynolds Middle School, we're going to be playing on the, on the football field. And football field one, we're going to be playing on the top um, area. That's where we're going to have our flag football field is going to be located at. At Shawnee Trail Sports Complex, we'll be on field four in the far left of that field. And Old Shepherd's Park, we play right above, you know, right field, basically that baseball field on field three is where we have our football field at Old Shepherd's Park. So at each of these locations, you'll see that check-in tent. Our check-in tent at Prosper is right here. You'll come in through the park, coming through the gate, coming through the walkway, get out to your field. Parking lot is right here next to uh, Old Shepherd's Park as well. The parking lot is right here next to Shawnee Trail. The restrooms are a little bit further away at Shawnee Trail. They're in the, the baseball complex. But um, all of those locations have ample parking. All these locations have a restroom. And all of these locations will have a check-in tents and table. So that way you can know how to check in. You know where to go through. You can get, get your hand sanitizer. You can get your equipment. You can ask questions. You can figure out where you need to go as you head onto the field. And on the field, we're going to have signs that say uh, spectator, parent spectator area, and player coach area. And we ask that you guys please try to, you know, respect those signs and follow those signs and stay in those areas. That way, um, you know, we can able to keep everyone separated in their areas and, and safe. So that's what the field will look like there. Um, I wanted to finish up here with uh, safety protocols in regards to uh, how we're keeping everybody safe on, on the field. So we, like I, like I mentioned before, we are asking that you please limit the number of spectators and ask that only one parent or guardian per player in attendance if possible, or at least uh, keep it to immediate family only. Uh, that way we don't have as many parents and spectators again, and that way we can do a better job of socially distancing while we're out there on the field. Um, staff, parents, and participants will require to stay home if they are someone in the home is in contact with or is, have, is sick themselves or showing any symptoms. So we had a summer program that finished in uh, August. So over that summer program, our parents did a really great job of emailing me, letting me know, hey, I'm not going to be out there this week because, uh, you know, I'm not feeling that great or my son's not feeling that great. So just to be cautious, we're going to take the day off. So when that happens, please communicate that stuff with me. That way we can um, be on the same page, especially if you're a coach, letting me know that, hey, uh, you know, my, my son's not feeling great or my wife's not feeling great, so we're going to stay home today. That way we can plan to cover for you guys and take over that team and, and communicate with the rest of the team and what's going on. So um, our, our summer parents did a really great job of communicating that, of uh, following through on that and executing that. So we ask that you guys do the same thing, that if you're feeling any symptoms, just to be extra cautious. I know we want to be at every game and be there to support them, and normally we would, but you know, right now we want to make sure that we're extra um, cautious and for everybody else's sake as well. Um, at the field, we're going to have hand sanitizer. So if you want to hand sanitize your hands before you enter, you know, as you're arriving and as you're leaving, feel free to do that. Um, and please follow the recommended guidelines when it comes to social distancing and face masks. So according to the executive order, face mask coverings are required for everyone over the age of 10, including coaches and staff. If your child is playing and he's over the age of 10, obviously when he's playing his game and practicing, they do not have to wear a face mask while they're playing. But for all of our spectators, a face mask is required if you are not able to socially distance. So understand that if you're able to social distance with your, your family and your group and you're able to stay a distance away from everybody else and you don't want to wear a mask and that's your choice for whatever reason, that's understandable and that's, that's your decision at that point. We still ask that everyone please wear a mask. That's what we, we're, we're highly recommending that, but we can't enforce that in any way. So um, what the mandate says with in Frisco, Plano and Prosper is wear a mask if you are not able to social distance. So what we told our parents over the summer and what we're gonna be telling you guys over the fall season is whether you plan to social distance or not, please come to the field with a face mask because there may be situations where you have to come to the table, where you have to talk to a coach, where you have to talk to the staff, where whatever might happen. And we wanna make sure that you're able to, you know, put a face mask on when the situations arrive, whether it's maybe you're leaving and there's a lot of traffic coming in and out 
you want to make sure that you're able to social distance during that time of the day or that, uh, that, that instance. So we're asking that everyone just please have it with them. Coaches are required and our staff is required to have them at all times while they're on the field. Parents, if you plan to go on the field to support your kid or help them out, maybe you have a four-year-old who needs you to be with them the entire time for whatever reason, they need you holding their hand, perfectly fine for you to come out and do that. But if you are going to do that, please bring your face mask with you. Just because there might be other parents on your team that don't feel comfortable with you out there without a face mask because everyone else will. So please, again, help us out on this. Um, the last thing that we want is just to create a situation where a face mask is something that we go home talking about. We've all seen social media and all the craziness that's going on out there. We don't want that to happen at our fields. Um, and unfortunately, you know, in another North Texas online sports program, some of the city officials came out to the parks to observe to make sure that they're following the protocols. And they noticed that coaches or staff at some points weren't wearing the face masks. And so the city actually shut them down for two weeks to make sure that they were, you know, no one was sick and that way they were safe before they started up again. We don't want that to happen, happen in our leagues where we have to shut down for weeks so or we have to cancel our program midway. So just, you know, help us out here and please have that face mask with you, use it when you need to, and that way we're all safe, we're all healthy, and we're all able to continue to play each and every week out there. Um, and again, uh, try to eliminate high fives and handshakes and physical contact when, if it's not necessary on the fields. Um, our staff will be disinfecting the equipment before and after each activity. We encourage kids to bring their equipment if possible, but we'll have it there nice and clean for you guys every single week. We're not gonna be doing team pictures this season just because it's really difficult to enforce social distancing and, uh, and, and eliminate crowds when we do team pictures. So we're not gonna be doing that. Again, like I said before, we're not gonna be doing uh, any kind of parent huddles or high five land, the parent tunnels, things like that. Again, um, our practice plans were adjusted this season to eliminate some of those high contact type of drills and keep groups a little bit smaller. We're not gonna be doing any team snacks or concessions at the field. So just a couple of things that we're implementing there, excuse me. And um, I wanted to touch on this real quick. If a child shows symptoms uh, while they're on the field, this is the, basically the protocol that we're going to follow. So if they were in the middle of a game and some kid starts coughing and coughing and coughing, we'll stop the game. We'll get that child and kind of take them off to the side away from everybody else. Well, at that point, we're going to go out and clean our equipment again. We'll bring hand sanitizer for the, parents, for the players and have them clean their hands real quick while we're, uh, our staff is working and the parents are working with that child. And if it's something to where you know, he just had a little asthma attack and he's getting his inhaler, then he comes back on. We'll let you guys know, hey guys, this is a situation. Um, he just had an asthma attack. And so we're gonna continue playing. Um, and uh, so, but if, that way you're aware and you're know at that point, if you wanna say, hey, I don't feel comfortable with this, we're gonna go ahead and, and you know, head on home at this point. You can do that. Uh, that happened over the summer season where the kid had an asthma attack. And so he went out to the field, we cleaned everything up. We paused for a few minutes. We came back and said, hey guys, you know, the mom left with the kid because he had an asthma attack and they forgot the inhaler. So um, that's what the reason why he, we had to stop the game and why he was coughing. So we're gonna, we want to continue to play because it wasn't nothing else related to anything else. But at that point, if you want to make your decision to you know, head on home, feel free to do that. We're gonna give you guys a few minutes to get ready and get this game back started again. And then that's how we'll do that. Um, so uh, that's how we'll handle a situation like that if it happens on the field, whether it's regards to an injury or to uh, symptoms like this. So um, again, but you know, do communicate with us, parents. Let us know, hey, my kid has allergies. He has, um, you know, asthma. He has this and that. That way, you know, the more information we can relate to our parents, and just so you're aware, you have a couple kids in your team that have allergies. So you know, they might, you know, you might notice this, and you know, that that's why. So what we're going to try to be as transparent as possible when it comes to how we handle these situations. So um, another thing I want to touch on real quick that we just kind of got verified with the local health department is. The guidelines, if a positive test does come, how we're gonna handle that. Over the summer season, we didn't have a positive test, so we're very lucky uh, on that side where we didn't have to deal with anything like that over the summer program. But if one happens, basically what we do is we immediately have to call the local health department at that point based off of the situation. Maybe they got sick during the week and it had nothing to do with our leagues or you know they got sick and it might've been during the time that they're around our teams. We will contact the teams and the parents uh, for those that were around that player. So whether it's a staff person or a coach, but say, hey, 
during this last week's game, um, the coach on the opposing team or one of the people at the field, we're not going to give any names or information. One of the people at the field um, had a positive test. Here's the, here's the situation that we know. And based off of the Frisco or Plano or Prosper guidelines, we're going to be either postponing a game or it happened on a Tuesday and he got tested on a Thursday. So I had nothing to do with our league. So we're going to continue to play, but this person's not going to be there anymore. But we'll let you guys know and be as transparent as we can on those situations. That way you're aware, you're informed, and you can make the best decision going forward for your family. So just want to kind of make sure you're up to date on that. Um, the last thing on the safety side that I want to touch on is uh, uh, with our coaches and with our staff. We recently updated our and upgraded our background check process with Sterling Volunteers. This is the most thorough background check company in the U.S. Every background check company will typically give a background March 19th, and then it's good for March 2020. Uh, you know, they don't check it for a whole year. With this background check system, we'll get monthly updates on our coaches and all our staff to ensure that the people that are out there working with our kids are safe to be out there with them. That way we're not having a situation where, you know, something happens with one of our coaches or a staff person, you know, midway through his background check, and he's still being cleared to coach and to work, and we're not aware of it. So we don't want that to happen within our league. So we get in these monthly updates within all of our background checks now to ensure that our coaches and staff working with our kids are as safe as possible. In addition to that, we also included ID verification for all of our coaches and background check staff. Uh, just to, again, just to make sure that everyone that's out there with our kids is safe. We will have CPR and first aid staff on site uh, and all of our staff will be washing hands and cleaning equipment before and after each session, like I mentioned before. So um, right on time. So that's, that's uh, basically the end of our presentation today. Um, real quick, I just wanted to touch on, you know, if most of our teams are full or getting close to full, but if you have a friend or sibling or neighbor that's interested in joining and play with you guys, we do take buddy requests and coach requests and we can always get friends together. So we do have a refer a friend program to where you can refer a buddy and uh, you'll get a $10 bonus credit. So, you know, say next season, you're like, hey, we had a lot of fun. Let's play back and let's come back in the spring and play again. Uh, and I have 10 friends that we want to bring with us to bring a full team. You know, you can let them know about this program and you get a $100 credit for the next season. Next season, you got another five friends. Let them know about it. Fifty bucks for that program. So there's no limit to number of credits you can get for the, you know, for as a thank you for you telling your friends and family about our programs. Um, and lastly, I just wanted to shout out our business partners and make sure you do check us out on Facebook and Instagram. I9 Frisco, I9 Press Prosper, I9 Plano. Check us out there for lots of uh, fun pictures and videos and contests and things like that that we do throughout the season. So. That is it for our presentation today, guys. Um, what I want to finish up with is see if anyone had any questions uh, that they wanted to chat in or, or um, ask something about. So if you do have any questions, feel free to um, chat them in there, and I could, I'll be happy to answer that question for you. Or if you want to, I don't, I don't, I don't hate to say unmute yourself because they might get five people at the same time. But if you do have a question you want to chat in, uh, feel free to do that. Um, we did have one question. How many kiddos are on each squad? This is varied a little bit. Uh, typically, we lick, we stay within like around seven to 10 kids per team. Uh, we don't go more than 10 kids. That's 10 kids is our max. Uh, right now with our current season, I would say seven to nine is what most of our teams are at. Uh, so that way we have two or three subs per team. So we're trying to stay around that number. Um, so that's where we are right now for this, for this upcoming fall season. And we also have about one or two coaches per team. There's a couple of teams that we don't yet have coaches for that we're trying to recruit for. Um, uh, but just so you're aware, if you're worried that like, hey, I got a team, my son's team doesn't have anyone on that team as a roster as a coach yet, it could be for two reasons. Uh, the parent is still going through the background check process and we're still completing that background check. So we can't add them to a roster until we certified. So that might be one reason. The other reason is we maybe didn't get a volunteer parent coach for your team. So if you're interested in volunteering and want to help, we'd love to get you to come out there and help. But whether we get one or not, um, understand that we're not going to have a team not be coached and not have a coach on week one. So whether myself or one of the other staff members has to help and support that team for the first three weeks or for the full season if we need to, we will make sure that your kids are coached every single week. We still love to have a parent volunteer for that team, even if it's just a helper helping with communication and helping with, you know, uh, league emails or helping with subs on the sidelines or whatever. But um, we want to make sure that you guys are aware that um, you know, we're not going to have a team start without a coach. We're not going to leave them kind of hanging and say, hey, you know, figure it out. Well, we wouldn't do that to you guys. 
Um, our son is a very is very big for his age. How do we know if he will be able, if he will be on the team assigned? He is four, but much larger than the typical age. Good question. So, Julie, um, we go by we go by age, not by size. Uh, and again, what we try to do is balance out the rosters to have average all the average age, height, and weight be about the same as well as skill level. But if your child is a real big four year old and he's playing with four and five year olds, and you're like, man, even with even as a four-year-old playing with five-year-olds, he's still too big. We can always move a kid up a division. Uh, so if you say, hey, he's probably better suited for a six and seven-year-old division based on his guy, his size, or his skill level, or whatever. You can always, kids can always move up. It's the situation that makes it tough is when we have a seven-year-old who wants to play down with, you know, five and six-year-olds because of whatever reason, size or, or his friends or buddies or whatever like that. We don't do that typically just because it might create an imbalance. Uh, kids who want to play up, if the parent is okay with it, we, we allow that. But kids playing down, we typically don't. So, Julie, if after week one you realize, you know, he's way too big, it's not going to be a good fit, you know, he's going to be, you know, he's running over kids or whatever the case might be, let us know. Find us on the field. We can talk to you about potentially moving him up a division, you know, letting you know what that division looks like, what size those kids are. That way you can get an idea based off of your child's size. But um, we can always talk about that before the season starts or after the first week. Um, Jared, do we bring chairs or are there bleachers? A uh, good question. So at the Frisco location and at the uh, Plano location, there are no bleachers or chairs. So you want to bring your own chairs for that location. And Prosper at Reynolds Middle School, from what I understand, and again, I, I'm going to confirm this tomorrow, but from what I've been told, we will have access to the bleachers. They are going to be a little bit further away than the field, obviously. So if you want to have a setup, a, you bring a chair to set up right next to the the field and be there on the field you can do that but from what i've been told we will be having the bleachers for the prosper location um <laughs> matthew said he can be on your team that big four-year-old that guy's always trying to get an advantage <laughs> coach matt there you go um yeah and like i said for shawnee trail you want to make sure that you bring and plano as well bring chairs bring tents it gets hot out there there's not a lot of shade we are set up next to the big pavilion where you might get a little bit of shade there but sometimes there's kids playing basketball or other things going on. So uh, it does get hot out there. Uh, there's not a lot, whole lot of tree coverage where our fields are set up. So definitely do recommend an umbrella, blanket, chair, whatever you want to do. Um, the, the fields, just so you're aware, are sprayed for, you know, red ants and things like that. Um, but sometimes, you know, over the summer, I had a parent tell me that they got, you know, their, their kid got bit by red ants. And, um, you know, so we have to just kind of pay attention to that. So. Just so, kind of, just so you're aware. We can't really do anything about that. I've had parents uh, complain to me about bees or ants, and I can't really uh, control that much stuff. But um, we do spray, and they do monitor the fields to make sure that they make sure the kids are, um, you know, stay safe and the fields are safe for them. Um, any other questions? Chat it in. Uh, Coach Steven, oh, good question. So there are a few of you guys that have, that have volunteered that um, have not yet been cleared. So I'm gonna email you guys separately this week. So look for that tomorrow. But basically, um, there's a couple people that have volunteered that have either not completed the background check process on Sterling volunteers, have not yet completed the, the ID verification, or there's something on our end that we're still waiting for clearance for. So um, I have about four or five coaches right now that I've reached out to Sterling volunteers for and said, hey, I still haven't got an uh, answer on these ones. It's been about three to five days. Typically, that's, how, that's as long as it normally goes. And so I'm waiting to hear back, you know, yeah, that's one, this one's clear, this one's happened with this one, or can I get an update? So it might be a situation where it's something on our end, or we need to update something on your end real quick to, to sign off a waiver, or there's something missing. So I'll be in touch with you guys individually because we do have a few of you guys that have, you know, teams with no coaches or teams that, you know, this is the second or third coach that um, we haven't been able to add to the roster yet. So yeah, a good question, Steven. I'll, I'll reach out to you guys individually this week. Look for that now coming up soon. Um, any other questions before we sign out? Are additional volunteer practices approved? Good question, uh, Rudy. So. For our leagues, it is practice and play on the same day. So that's what parents sign up for. That's what they typically, that's why they like this program is that convenient format. Um, with that being said, if you guys had a couple kids in the neighborhood and want to get together and have a practice on a Wednesday, 
and you talk to the parents and say, hey guys, you know, we'd love to do this. You can do that, but understand this is an optional practice. You can't make it mandatory. And attendance to that practice can't be who starts the game or who gets the position or playing time, things like that. This has to be completely 100% optional. And just please understand that getting the fields is completely up to you. And we can give you some recommendations that can maybe you know point you in the right direction or whatever. But um, you know, the, the, my biggest concern with that is our insurance covers you guys on game day for practicing games. So if you guys go out to the field on a Tuesday to have a practice and a kid twists his ankle and you know requires some medical attention, unfortunately we don't cover that. And that might be something that the parents will take care of themselves. Or you know, I, I would hate for you as a coach who organize us have to, you know, have some kind of liability issue there. So we try to eliminate the practice during the week. Again, I have a few teams that all, you know, th these kids all live in the same neighborhood. So they get together, you know, three or four of them, they'll practice or they'll play or, or whatever. So we can't, I'm not going to say no, no one could practice during the week because we want them to play, but it's just not something that we can approve, um, delegate, schedule for you. And, you know, unfortunately our, our insurance covers, the, the insurance doesn't cover those additional practices. So it has to be completely optional, completely um, um, voluntary for our parents on your team. So you can talk to them um, by sending them an email if you want to, or on game day, you know, let them know, hey, here's something that we're looking at doing, and if you want to join me, feel free to. And you might get two, you might get five, you might get all ten. Um, but again, it, there, again, there can't be no repercussions from that practice or whatever. And even for our required practices, if a kid shows up to games every single week and never shows up to one practice, based on our rules, that kid should get 50% of the game time. Uh, we want equal playing time for everybody as much as possible, but 50% is what we require for our coaches. And that's again because kids have fun when they play. And a lot of times a kid showing up um, to practice late or missing practice or missing a game, 90% of the time, it's not the kid's fault. It's not like they don't want to go. It's a lot of times mom has uh, another you know appointment. So they got a birthday party. This is going on, that's going on, and they have schedule conflicts and they can't make it. So we don't want to punish the kids for that. So kid shows up, let's get them on the field, let's get them play, let's let them have some fun. So um, yeah, and then the coaches will reach out to you. We, we set 30 to 45 minutes in our practice. Some coaches might say, hey, we're only gonna practice for 20 minutes because we really wanna, don't wanna tire the kids out. Some kids might come in for you know 15 minutes extra to, to get some extra practice. The coaches will direct that to you. What we're gonna say is, here's the minimum that we re recommend. 30 minutes for this age group, 35, 40, 45. And then you guys can do your, your work with your team on that side of it. So you can, you can work with your coaches on that. Um, I think I got all the questions that have come through so far. So um, if you have any other questions, feel free to email me. This is kind of crazy as we get towards opening day. I have a, um, you know, triple digits in my inbox right now that I'm trying to get through. So it might take me a day or two to get to you, but I will get to every single email before um, as soon as I can. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to email me. Otherwise, we'll see you guys on the field on Sunday. We definitely appreciate you guys as joining us this season and all your support um, for the fall and over this last, you know, six months that we've been getting ready to get there and play again and look forward to seeing you guys again on Sunday. Demario will be at the field on Plano. I'll be in Prosper on Sunday. I'll be in Frisco the week after that. So make sure you come by, say hi, uh, give an elbow bump, and we'll look forward to seeing you guys out there. Thanks again, and we'll talk to you guys soon.